History of Guinea The modern state of Guinea did not come into existence until 1958, but the history of the area stretches back well before European colonization. Its current boundaries were determined during the colonial period by the Berlin Conference, 1884 to 1885, and the French, who ruled Guinea until 1958. What is now Guinea was on the fringes of the major West African empires. The Ghana Empire is believed to be the earliest of these which grew on trade but contracted and ultimately fell due to the hostile influence of the Almoravids. It was in this period that Islam first arrived in the region. The Sasso Kingdom, 12th to 13th centuries, briefly flourished in the void but the Islamic Mandinka Mali Empire came to prominence when Soundai the Kaida defeated Sasso ruler, Sumanguru Kante at the semi-historical Battle of Kirina in circa 1235. The Mali Empire was ruled by Mansa, emperors, the most famous being Kankumosa, who made a famous Hajj to Mecca in 1324. Shortly after his reign the Mali Empire began to decline and was ultimately supplanted by its vassal states in the 15th century. The most successful of these was the Songhai Empire, expanding its power from about 1460, and eventually surpassing the Mali Empire in both territory and wealth. It continued to prosper until a civil war over succession followed the death of Askia Daoud in 1582. The weakened empire fell to invaders from Morocco to the Battle of Tanda by just three years later. The Moroccans proved unable to rule the kingdom effectively, however, and it split into many small kingdoms. After the fall of the major West African empires, various kingdoms existed in what is now Guinea. Fulani Muslims migrated to Fudajalan in central Guinea and established an Islamic state from 1735 to 1898 with a written constitution and alternate rulers. The Wasalu Empire was a short-lived, 1878 to 1898, empire, led by Samari Ture in the predominantly Malinke area of what is now Upper Guinea and southwestern Mali, Wasalu. It moved to Ivory Coast before being conquered by the French. The slave trade came to the coastal region of Guinea with European adventurers in the 16th century. Slavery had always been part of everyday life but the scale increased as slaves were exported to work elsewhere in the triangular trade. Guinea's colonial period began with French military penetration into the area in the mid-19th century. French domination was assured by the defeat in 1898 of the armies of Samari Ture, Mansa, or Emperor, of the Wasalu state and leader of Malinke descent which gave France control of what today is Guinea on adjacent areas. France negotiated Guinea's present boundaries in the late 19th and early 20th centuries with the British for Sierra Leone, the Portuguese for their Guinea colony now Guinea-Bissau, and Liberia. Under the French, the country formed the territory of Guinea within French West Africa, administered by a governor-general resident in Dakar. Lieutenant governors administered the individual colonies, including Guinea. In 1958 the French Fourth Republic collapsed due to political instability and its failures in dealing with its colonies, especially Indochina and Algeria. The founding of a Fifth Republic was supported by the French people, while French President Charles de Gaulle made it clear on August 8, 1958 that French's colonies were to be given a stark choice between more autonomy in a new French community and immediate independence in the referendum to be held on 28 September 1958. The other French colonies chose the former but Guinea, under the leadership of Ahmed Sekoutere whose Democratic Party of Guinea, PDG, had won 56 of 60 seats in 1957 territorial elections, voted overwhelmingly for independence. The French withdrew quickly, and on October 2, 1958, Guinea proclaimed itself a sovereign and independent republic, with Sekoutere as president. Following France's withdrawal, Guinea quickly aligned itself with the Soviet Union and adopted socialist policies. This alliance was short-lived, however, as Guinea moved towards a Chinese model of socialism. Despite this, however, the country continued to receive aid and investment from capitalist countries such as the U.S. Even the relationship with France improved, after the election of Valéry Giscard d'Estaing as president, trade increased and the two countries exchanged diplomatic visits. By 1960, Ture had declared the PDG the only legal party. For the next 24 years, the government and the PDG were one. Ture was re elected unopposed to four seven year terms as president, and every five years voters were presented with a single list of PDG candidates for the National Assembly. Advocating a hybrid African socialism domestically and pan Africanism abroad, Ture quickly became a polarizing leader, 
and his government became intolerant of dissent, imprisoning hundreds, and stifling free press. At the same time, the Guinean government nationalized land, removed French-appointed and traditional chiefs from power, and broke ties with French government and companies. Vacillating between support for the Soviet Union and, by the late 1970s, the United States, Guinea's economic situation became as unpredictably as its diplomatic line. Alleging plots and conspiracies against him at home and abroad, Therese regime targeted real and imagined opponents, driving thousands of political opponents into exile. In 1970, Portuguese forces, from neighboring Portuguese Guinea, staged Operation Green Sea, a raid into Guinea with the support of exiled Guinean opposition forces. Among other goals, the Portuguese military wanted to kill or capture Secu Tere due to his support of the Page, a guerrilla movement operating inside Portuguese Guinea. After several days of fierce fighting, the Portuguese forces retreated without achieving most of their goals. The regime of Secu Tere increased the number of internal arrests and executions. The Guinean market women's revolt in 1977 resulted in the regime's softening of economic restrictions and began a turn away from the radical socialism previously practiced by the government. Secutere died on March 26, 1984 after a heart operation in the United States, and was replaced by Prime Minister Louis Lansana Biboki, who was to serve as interim president pending new elections. The PDG was due to elect a new leader on April 3, 1984. Under the Constitution, that person would have been the only candidate for president. However, hours before that meeting, Colonels Lansana Gonte and Diara Traore seized power in a bloodless coup. Gonte assumed the role of president, with Traore serving as prime minister until December. Gonte immediately denounced the previous regime's record on human rights, released 250 political prisoners, and encouraged approximately 200,000 more to return from exile. He also made explicit the turn away from socialism, but this did little to alleviate poverty and the country showed no immediate signs of moving towards democracy. In 1992, Conte announced a return to civilian rule, with a presidential poll in 1993 followed by elections to parliament in 1995, in which his party, the Party of Unity and Progress, won 71 of 114 seats, despite his stated commitment to democracy. Kani's grip on power remained tight. In September 2001, the opposition leader Alpha Conde was imprisoned for endangering state security, though he was pardoned eight months later. He subsequently spent a period of exile in France. In 2001, Conte organized and won a referendum to lengthen the presidential term and in 2003 began his third term after elections were boycotted by the opposition. In January 2005, Gonte survived the suspected assassination attempt while making a rare public appearance in the capital Conakry. His opponents claimed that he was a tired dictator whose departure was inevitable, whereas his supporters believed that he was winning a battle with dissidents. Guinea still faces very real problems and according to foreign policy is in danger of becoming a failed state. In 2000 Guinea became embroiled in the instability which had long blighted the rest of West Africa as rebels crossed the borders with Liberia and Sierra Leone and it seemed for a time that the country was headed for civil war. Conte blamed neighboring leaders for coveting Guinea's natural resources, though these claims were strenuously denied. In 2003 Guinea agreed plans with her neighbors to tackle the insurgents. In 2007 there were big protests against the government, resulting in the appointment of a new prime minister. In a coup d'état several hours following Therese's death, Lansana Conte became the president. The constitution and parliament were suspended and a committee for national recovery was established. Conte remained in power until his death on December 22, 2008. In several hours following his death, Mosadati's Kamara seized control of Guinea as the head of a junta. On September 28, 2009, the junta ordered its soldiers to attack people who had gathered to protest Kamara's presumed candidacy in the upcoming presidential elections. The soldiers went on a rampage of rape, mutilation, and murder. On December 3, 2009, an aide shot Kamara during a dispute about the rampage of September 2009. Kamara went to Morocco for medical care. Vice President and Defense Minister Sagabak and eight flew back from Lebanon to run the country in Kamara's absence. On January 12, 2010 Kamara was flown from Morocco to Burkina Faso. After meeting in Ouagadougou on 13 and 14 of January, Kamara, Kanate, and Blaise Kampaori, president of Burkina Faso, 
produced a formal statement of 12 principles promising a return of Guinea to civilian rule within six months. It was agreed that the military would not contest the forthcoming elections, and Kamara would continue his convalescence outside Guinea. On January 21, 2010, the military Honda appointed Jean Marie Doré as Prime Minister of a six month transition government, leading up to elections. The presidential election was set to take place on 27 June and July 18, 2010. It was held as being the first free and fair election since independence in 1958. The first round took place normally on June 27, 2010 with ex-Prime Minister Salya Deline Diallo and his rival Alpha Conde emerging as the two runners-up fourth second round. However, due to allegations of electoral fraud, the second round of the election was postponed until September 19, 2010. A delay until 10 October was announced by the Electoral Commission, CENI. Subject to approval by Sega Bakanate. Yet another delay until 24 October was announced in early October. Elections were finally held on 7 November. Voter turnout was high, and the elections went relatively smoothly. November 16, 2010, Alva Conde, the leader of the opposition party rally of the Guinean people, RGP, was officially declared the winner of the 7 November runoff in Guinea's presidential election. He had promised to reform the security sector and review mining contracts if elected. On the night of July 18, 2011, President Conde's residence was attacked in an attempted coup. The attack included a fierce firefight and rocket-propelled grenades. The president was unharmed. Sixteen people have been charged with the attempted assassination. Most of those indicted are close associates of Conde. The National Assembly of Guinea, the country's legislative body, has not met since 2008 when it was dissolved after the military coup in December. Elections have been postponed many times since 2007 and, most recently, were scheduled for July 8, 2012. In April 2012, President Conde postponed the elections indefinitely, citing the need to ensure that they were transparent and democratic. In February 2013, a plane carrying the head of the Guinean Armed Forces, General Khalifa Diallo, and nine other military officials, crashed on its way to the Liberian capital, Monrovia. The opposition coalition withdrew from the electoral process in mid-February, mainly due to President Conde's insistence on using a suspicious South African firm Waymark Infotech to draw up the registered voter list. In late February 2013, political violence erupted in Guinea after protesters took to the streets to voice their concerns over the transparency of the upcoming May 2013 elections. The demonstrations were fueled by the opposition coalition's decision to step down from the electoral process in protest at the lack of transparency in the preparations for elections. Nine people were killed during the protests, while around 220 were injured, and many of the deaths and injuries were caused by security forces using live fire on protesters. The political violence also led to inter-ethnic clashes between the Fula and Malinke peoples, the latter forming the base of support for President Conde with the former consisting mainly of the opposition. On March 26, 2013 the opposition party backed out of the negotiation with the government over the upcoming 12th of May election. The opposition claimed that the government has not respected them, and have not kept any promises they agreed to. This is expected to lead to more protests and fighting in the streets of Guinea. Beginning in July 2014, Guinea suffered the most severe recorded outbreak of Ebola in history, which rapidly spread to neighboring countries Liberia and Sierra Leone. The epidemic was over by June 2016. General, thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.